Hey guys, and welcome. Everyone seemed to like the video where I upgraded a 2009 iMac and installed the latest macOS 12 Monterey. One comment I noticed regarding Monterey is that Core 2 Duo Max, like early 2008, would not run it at all or would be too slow to run it well. The Core 2 Duo is one of my all-time favorite processors. It essentially kicked off modern computing as we know it today, and even late model Core i processors still share some of its architecture DNA. Reviewing OpenCore's documentation, it seems like many Core 2 iMacs are actually supported by the legacy patcher, which meant I didn't have much choice but to try it. For this project, we have an early 2008 iMac with the factory optional NVIDIA 8800GS upgrade. This is the iMac which was replaced by the 2009 upgrade in a previous video. As previously noted, this iMac is limited to 4GB of RAM, technically 6GB if you can find a rare 4GB DDR2 module. I've never seen one. I don't want to tamper with the existing operating system at this point, so I'll be installing onto a USB connected SSD. Yes, it will hinder performance some, but it will still give a good idea of general possibilities and performance for, for purposes of testing. First, we get a copy of the macOS installer. If you have a supported Mac, you can do this via the App Store. If not, I'll leave a link down below to Mr. Macintosh's website, which has direct links to the official installers. If you used a direct link, then now you'll need to install the PKG file as well. Now you'll notice you have a new app in your Applications folder. Because this Mac is not officially supported, you can't install it from here. We now need to download the OpenCore Legacy Patcher from the GitHub page. Again, I'll leave that in the description below. So now we can run OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Note that this builds a custom installer for specific unsupported Macs. You cannot necessarily use this same USB installer on a different model of unsupported Mac without first rebuilding the patch for that specific model. For the previous video I made, I used the command line tool, but this time we'll try the friendly GUI tool. I follow the prompts to build a USB installer using the version of macOS downloaded in the previous step. After the stick is created, I go ahead and install the bootloader on the stick. The bootloader is what allows Monterey installer to boot on an unsupported Mac. Without this custom bootloader, the USB stick will only work on officially supported Macs. Now reboot while holding the option key. This brings up the boot menu where you choose your boot device. We want to choose EFI boot with the open core logo. Now we see the open core boot screen. I see the internal SSD as well as the Monterey installer. If your internal drive is empty, you will only see the Monterey installer. Now the installer should work like normal. Wipe the drive, ensuring to choose APFS as the file system, and continue the install as usual. For some reason, I kept getting a notice of a corrupted installer, which I didn't get on the 2009 installation previously. I'm not sure why this happened. I rebuilt the USB stick and it says the same thing. I even used the same original installer as I did for the 2009. I can only suspect it's a bug in the newer version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher I'm using. But if you know what's going on, please drop a comment below. After a bunch of reading and testing, I couldn't get past this point, so I decided to take another approach. I grabbed my spare 2009 27-inch iMac from the previous video, connected my SSD via USB, and used the original OpenCore Legacy Patched Install USB stick that worked in the previous video. This successfully got a vanilla, fresh copy of Monterey installed on my USB-connected SSD. Now I was able to go back to the 2008 iMac and use my new installer USB to boot into my freshly installed macOS on the 2008 machine. 
Being suspicious of an open core bug at this point, I used the older command line version of open core legacy patch I had. I rebuilt open core for this specific 2008 iMac and applied the patch. Excellent. Now the USB SSD boots like a normal Mac drive. You'll notice that graphics are super laggy and Wi-Fi doesn't work either. No problem though. We just need to install the post installation patches to get everything else working. Ethernet works out of the box, so if you don't have a cable close by, you'll either need a supported USB Wi-Fi dongle or a Wi-Fi to Ethernet bridge like this. Once you have internet, the post installation patch will fetch files from GitHub and install them. Reboot and voila, no more laggy graphics and your Wi-Fi is now working. Again, as you can expect, you won't be getting any sort of metal support. Just basic legacy graphics acceleration, which is sufficient for web browsing and YouTube watching. Apple offered several GPUs in 2008, so you'll have to consult the open core documentation to know specifically which one is supported. This iMac has the NVIDIA 8800GS GPU, which I can confirm works great based on the short testing I did. Even sleep was working when I tried it. So how does it perform? Honestly, not bad. I wouldn't describe it as snappy, but for a spare machine that does very light office and web tasks, it'll get the job done for sure. I wouldn't expect to do any sort of graphics work without pulling hair out over impatience, and I wouldn't dare consider video editing on it. You can see it's not entirely fluid, but it plays video once it gets there. My verdict then? It gets a pass. I probably wouldn't seek out and buy one of these for this upgrade. Your time and money are better spent elsewhere. But if you have one of these already collecting dust and you have an afternoon with nothing to do, then it's a great project which might rejuvenate an otherwise useless piece of hardware. I hope you liked this video. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit the bell icon to support the channel and be notified of upcoming videos. Until next time.